Hello, friends. Welcome to your Facebook field trip. We're so glad that you're here today. Let me get a few waves or thumbs up or hi there, how are you? So I just like to make sure you guys can see us and hear us. Oh, good. There we are. Welcome, friends. I'm Erica from the Marketing Department. I'm all matched up. It's the very new must-have fashion accessory. I have tied it differently this time, which I'm hoping means I can breathe better. We need to thank our amazing volunteers who've been fast and furious making these masks to keep our zoo staff safe. Look at the difference in this water. This is what happens when our dive team comes down to clean out the polar bear pool. They vacuum things out and it kind of stirs everything up. So it's a little bit cloudy here because they just dove. And then you can see big boy swimming here over in the corner. So let me introduce you to our zany cast of characters for today's field trip. You guys know cute Hannah, marketing department. Here's cute Melanie. She's one of our animal keepers we'll be talking to. Now, I'd like you to know who you're talking to because everybody's masked up. This is what Melanie really looks like. She joined us once on Channel 4 with that little guy, Pablo. Are we going to meet Pablo today? We are going to meet Pablo today. We might have a Pablo sighting. And then off in the distance, there's Megan. This is what she normally looks like. There's Megan with one of our opossums. Another critter that we might meet. So let's have Melanie step on in. Mel, what you got for us today? We'll step on so, over here. So, um, you posted photos. Back to Facebook and rotate it. I had a text pop up. I'm so sorry. All uh -oh. right, Melanie, what makes a mammal I am a mammal? Back on. So, there are five things that we're going to talk about that makes a mammal a mammal. And the first big thing that I think everybody knows is that they have hair or fur. I picture hair, absolutely. Yes. So, we're mammals as humans, and we have hair all over the tops of our heads and the rest of our bodies. And so do these mammals that I have here today. So this oh, is Oh my goodness. Turbo. Hey, first of all, I thought he was fake. She is very much real. This is Turbo. She is a Madagascar hedgehog lesser, lesser hedgehog tenrec. And most people are probably seeing her right now and saying, oh my gosh, it's a hedgehog, it's a hedgehog. It is not a hedgehog. They're actually not related to hedgehogs. They're more related to moles and shrews. So you can see oh that in her little goodness. face right here. Okay, I'm I'm can I get in? You're going to yeah. pick her up. Okay. And you just get wherever you need to get. Oh my goodness. So you can see the hair on her little snout area, yep. but it doesn't look like hair on her back. So it does not. Those are quills. So just like a hedgehog. Has can we quills. touch? Can I touch you or no? If I do two finger? Yep, yeah, just down her spines there. Down oh, her so quills. they're kind of prickly. Yep. Oh my goodness, you guys, that is so cool. Yeah, and so these are actually just modified hairs. So just like our hairs and our nails are made of keratin, so are those little quills. And I brought with me something else that a lot of you guys might recognize. This is an African crusted porcupine quill. And it's actually made out of the same materials that Turbo's quills are made out of. Same as keratin, these are hollow on the inside, so hers are as well. And they use these for protection, but they are basically just modified hairs. So keratin's interesting because that's also what a rhino horn's made out of. And all, yep. so that's, and that's basically hair and nails. Yep. Okay, okay. Yep. I do, I, can I touch on yep. that? So if you like, guys are having some video connections, you can try popping out and then popping back in. Um, the microphone might be rubbing because we're trying to wear our masks. So I'm just kind of adjusting because everyone really wants to hear what you're saying. Is it Melanie's or Is two? it me? Let's clip yours like down here on this little folded fabric maybe. There we go. Give us just a second. We'll get her like, re-mic'd up. There we go. Upside down. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Okay. Hopefully that's better. So with her hair and fur... Um, it's mostly on her belly that you guys will recognize is all that hair oh, that yeah. she has there. Okay. Does she like that? She's like, yeah, oh, tickle, not so much. Tickle. Yeah, she doesn't really love having her belly touched very much. Um, these guys don't like to be touched a ton. She's actually just waking up from torpor, which is kind of like a wintertime hibernation for these guys. So she's still pretty yeah, so sleepy. So she's a little sluggish. Yep, she's going to wake up. We'll put her back in here. Um, somebody loves your little travel tote, by the way, Mel. Yes. So this is adorable. Now, yep. Cassandra has a good question that I think ties in with mammals. She wondered how many babies they can have at one time. Yeah, they can have a few babies at a time. So that is another characteristic of mammals is they have live babies. Now, there are two exceptions to that. I made myself a little list, and I put a little <laughs> asterisk next to it. 
because there are two exceptions, and that's a platypus and echidnas. They actually lay eggs. But every other mammal, they will lay, or they will have live babies. So they don't come out of an egg just like a human baby. It comes out as basically a miniature human. Um, so so do these turbo guys. the tenrec, not um, hedgehog, but nope. related to. Related to moles and shrews. So not related okay. to a hedgehog at all, actually. Okay. But they do look very similar. So that's usually what a lot of people say first thing. But yeah, she can have quite a few little babies here and there. They can have anywhere from two up to about eight to ten babies. How about that? Okay, yep. so what's next? You guys, that's Tenrec. We're talking about mammals today. Yep. If you're just joining us, we're chatting with Mel. We're talking mammals. And if you've been enjoying our Facebook field trips, go ahead and click that little donate button for us. Um, thank you, Nancy. I noticed that you did. These Facebook field trips live on our page uh, forever, really. And you can also catch them on YouTube as well. Now. Uh, Claire wants to know what they eat, the tenrec. Yep, tenrecs are insectivores. So they are going to mostly eat insects as well as some fruits and veggies. Here at the zoo, we feed them mealworms, crickets, as well as a little insectivore pellet diet. And then they also get some fruits, veggies, and maybe some hard-boiled egg every once in a while. So they eat a wide variety of things. She kind of is enjoying her seaside home here. And yep. I think the sea lions have enjoyed having a little visual enrichment here as well. Yep. Okay, what mammal right. is next? So our next mammal is going to be one that a lot of you guys are going to recognize. He was a huge superstar in one of our latest Facebook Lives. Okay. Oh, we're having Hannah. We're doing a little crossover action here. Trying to oh keep our goodness. distance like you guys and trying to wear our masks. Oh, we know this yep. guy. So this is Pablo. He's our three-banded armadillo. Now, I don't think mammal when I see Pablo. Most people don't. I have actually had numerous people ask me what type of reptile this is. Um, he is not a reptile at all. He is a mammal. And even though he's covered in this hard shell on the outside, he does have some tiny little hairs that are very coarse. I don't know if you can yeah, oh zoom yeah. in we on get those a good and see those. those. I feel a little intrusive. I feel like I'm a little up in his business. <laughs> he is so, used to that very much. Is he? Um, he loves having the company. So and, he does have the hair, but the hard shell is interesting. Yep. And again, same thing as the quills, made out of keratin. So the same thing that your hair and nails are made out of is what is on his shell. So it's still really hard. He can feel everything in his shell can um, he? just as a tortoise can. People are saying, tell Pablo we love him. Oh, everybody loves Pablo. Can we Pablo. touch on the back? We can just right here. Okay, just right here. Yep. Okay. Because they can the uh, pinch down in there, right? Yes, that's his defense mechanism. So he has two spots where he's going to pinch. One is going to be these three bands. And those three bands are, if an animal comes up and sniffs on his back, he will pop open and then pinch whatever is there. Wow. And then the opposite is true for this here. He can close up into a complete ball into a very tight ball so if something goes in there he will actually grab that with his <gasps> cool little toes pull it in and uh, pinch really hard see those little toes and these guys are from south america there is actually only one animal besides humans um, that can crack this shell open so do you guys know that uh, south okay america can crack open this outer shell put it on that facebook live okay. <laughs> So we talked about having hair or fur, and then we also talked about having live babies. So these guys will also have live babies. He likes your shoe. Every he time I see shoes. you is Pablo. Yeah, Pablo loves shoes. Um, so I want to chime in before you go on. Amber, uh, she's watching, and she's visually impaired. So Amber, we're talking about an armadillo, a three-banded armadillo that can roll up and look just like a tight little ball, and he has kind of a hard shell on the outside, but he's a mm. mammal, so we're comparing all the mammals. So tell us more, uh, tell us more about yep. him and why he likes your shoes so, so much. So kind of similar to what we just talked about with live babies, all mammal babies, when they are born, drink milk. So that is the third quality of what makes a mammal a mammal. There are two more that we're <laughs> going to talk about. One Tiffany, more. the audio is scratchy. We're wearing masks, and um, it's kind of a tricky building, but... We'll just keep plugging along. You can watch these later when they buffer better on YouTube as well. Yep. Okay, so one more. I don't want to, um, he's tricky. He moves yeah, so fast. Yeah, he moves very quickly. A couple of questions about Pablo. Are the babies born with shells? 
Yes, they are born with cells, but they're not as hard <laughs> as an adult cell. So it's extremely hard. Um, actually, fun fact, the nine-banded armadillo is related. You can find those here in the United States. A man in Texas actually shot a nine-banded armadillo where they are considered uh, yes. Oh gosh, really? Oh, that oh, tells you us. how they are. Now, here's a good question that we get often is, are they good pets? They are not good pets. So, um, pretty much none of the animals that we have here make really good pets. Um, the Tenrec, some people in the UK actually have them as pets. Um, but they're kind of difficult to care for. Like I mentioned before, they have a really specialized diet. Um, our Pablo friend here, they are very dirty. Also, is an insectivore, so he needs a specialized diet as well. And then our third critter here. I do need to say, Amber made a funny comment that said, "This is what we'll all look like when we get out of quarantine." Pretty much. That's how <laughs> I think that's how we're all like, feeling hey. right now. That's pretty much how we're feeling. Oh, that's so funny. Okay, let's move on. So our last animal that we have here, we'll just let Pablo run around. So if you see him oh, in the background, like he's going to do his yeah, thing. He's That's pretty much all the time. He'll pass out for about a half hour at a time, and then he'll wake back up and do it all over again. So we have two more qualities of mammals that we need to get through. One is they are all endotherms, a.k.a. warm-blooded. So you might have heard the term warm-blooded before. Endotherms, they don't have to rely on any external temperatures to have their internal temperature. So as humans, ours is always 98.6 degrees. Inside, doesn't matter how hot or cold it is outside, we don't rely on the sun to warm the insides of our bodies. And we know that our crocodiles do, because yes. when they come out in the summer, they just sit there with their big old mouths open on the Exactly. Side, inside so of their reptiles, mouth. amphibians, they are all exotherms. So they rely on the outside temperature in order to regulate their body temperature. So you'll see reptiles out basking in the sun. That's because they're trying to warm up. When they need to cool down, they'll go out into the shade. Our last um, quality of a mammal is that they have more complex brains than any other group of animals. So, you know, we're all pretty smart here, as are the rest of we the like mammals. To think so. Yeah. So, those are the five qualities um, that we went through. If you're just joining us, they were that we are all endotherms or warm blooded, we have complex brains, we give live birth, babies drink milk, and they all have hair or fur on their bodies. So our last animal that we're going to show here is Ophelia, our opossum. And I'm going to hand this mic over to Megan. And she's going to talk to you guys about opossums. Can hand the mic over to Megan. My microphone, is it getting any better? Um, the mic issues are always a little bit of a challenge. We still have Pablo running around. And we're going to mic up Megan over here and look at this cutie. Hey guys, can you hear me all right? Give us a thumbs up. I hope you guys can hear. We've checked all of the mic connections. So let me know if it's my mic, Erica's, or Megan's mic. And I'll try to get the receiver out of the way as well. Okay. So this is Ophelia. She is a Virginia opossum. And as you can see, her body is covered in fur. And that's generally what we think of as uh, the main characteristics of mammals, right? just covered in that fur. And if you'll notice, she's got all of these modified hairs on her face, just a like a dog and a cat. And yeah, exactly. Those are called whiskers. And they are especially uh, useful when maybe you spend a lot of time in the dark, like opossums. They're often, uh, they'll be nocturnal and explore at night and it helps her they're super sensitive not necessarily the hairs themselves but the hair follicles are super sensitive and she can sense things in front of her face before she accidentally bumps before into she them. bumps into it yeah, How about exactly. that? now for a, a predator like a cat uh, those whiskers become really handy for uh, hunting they as a, a mouse or something gets closer they can sense uh, where exactly that mouse is and use that to help their cat-like reflexes to catch that prey item. 
As you'll notice, uh, she is hairless on her tail, so she almost kind of looks like a giant rat, doesn't she? She's not a rodent of unusual size. R U S. Oh, Pablo's yep. still down there. I better watch my step, yeah, watch little guy. Um, she is actually a marsupial, which is a very special kind of mammal that has a pouch. And we might be able to kind of show that off for you. We'll try here. Okay, what are we feeding her? We are feeding her uh, little leaf eater biscuits, yogurt. Okay, they are on so the we're going to try to see her pouch, see you guys. And then, Heather, we're going to answer that question because that's the most important question about these creatures. Okay, let's see. Okay. She doesn't like it, yep. huh? Yep. All right, we won't pressure it. Stephanie said, I had no idea that I needed to see an opossum eat today, but I totally right? did. Right? Oh, they gosh, they have these adorable... Watch out for Pablo. ...macking mouths while they eat. Let's step this way and see if we can get her face a little better. All right, so yeah. here's the million-dollar question. Is it possum or opossum? It is opossum. Possum... Did you guys hear that? Opossum. Tell us the difference. Okay, so... Opossum is actually a marsupial found in Australia. Opossum comes from the word opossum. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting a, real technical it's here, a Native Megan. American word. So um, opossums uh, are is the correct term for the uh, possums found in North America. So same animal, different location. Not same animal. They're totally different animals. Um, Opossums are actually the only marsupial found in the United States. So, and they live so far apart, they just uh, kind of drifted apart evolutionarily. Huh. Possums and opossums. We have some great questions coming in. First of all, Ophelia is winning over the hearts of everybody. They say, "Can she be live every day? Right? Like, what are you guys doing? Right? Why aren't we seeing?" <laughs> yeah. Why? Why do we like it in animals? Yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. Let's try it. Let's see if I can get. You guys are getting my mic real close and see if you can hear her. Can you hear her? It's funny, we like hearing sounds in animals, but not our spouses not any, and not yeah, anybody not else. Only animals. Is it cute? Okay, so let's talk about their eyesight in the daytime. You talked about they do a lot of nighttime and those whiskers help. Mm -hmm. Is their day, how's their eyesight? Their eyesight is not super great. You, you notice she's got beady eyes, uh, just round and black. She, they're not super big, so she can't really see uh, uh, very well. And those whiskers help in that sense as well. Um, but they don't really need super great eyesight during the day anyway, because they're often napping. Like, I, her is, pink toes are my favorite. Is that, those, uh, are they not adorable? <laughs> are you napping? Oh, you want to get closer? Here, get, get your little snout right up there. Let's give everyone a real good view of you. Oh, good shake. Hey, we've had some people donating. I do want to say thank you. You can hit that donate button. We really need the support right now with the zoo. It's hard when we're closed. It's hard to feed and take care of the animals. So if you are able to, we know it's a tricky time, but go ahead and hit your donate button. And thank you so much for supporting your zoo. There's other ways to support the zoo too. You can go to our website, hogelzoo.org. You can buy tickets now that you'll use later. We have amazing animal art, all sorts of stuff there. Okay, more great questions coming in. Robbie wants to know, does she hang from her tail like you see in cartoons? Excellent question. So they're like semi-prehensile, and that prehensile word means that they can grip things with their tail, like you often see in a lot of uh, South American primates. She doesn't really have a lot of dexterity in this tail. When they're younger, they have a little bit more dexterity, and they can kind of catch themselves on branches, keep, prevent themselves from uh, falling down. And yeah, every once in a while, she'll wrap it around my hand to kind of like hold on, especially if I'm holding her, but it won't necessarily support her whole weight. So it's not totally prehensile. Everyone's going, Pablo, like they get little glimmers of Pablo in the background. Now her tail kind of looks like a snake almost. It like does. The She's same almost skin. got like scales on her tail. Um, She's but being bashful now. There we go. Like, There's a good view of her tail. Yeah. It's just her, her skin though, not necessarily true scales yeah. either. Yeah. All right, do you guys have more? My kids want to know how big opossums get and how fast they can run. So the girls get just about this big. Uh, boys can get a little bit bigger than this, but not, not too much bigger. Around the size of, I would say, an average house cat. How long do they live? 
How long do they live? Good question, they Mel. They only live <laughs> around two to three years. In the wild, it's Wait, it's more, two to three years? Yeah, they live a super short lifespan. So at three, they're a senior? Yes. Oh, yes, my goodness. Absolutely. In fact, this girl, I think she's only, what, a year old? And she's, Why she's such middle a age. short lifespan? <laughs> because they reproduce super fast with lots and lots of babies. Yes. They How can, many babies do they have at any given time? They have around 13. <laughs> yeah, Millie's getting excited over there. Oh, no, no. oh, that's Chris in the background, by the way. I did not print up a picture of Chris. I didn't know he would be joining us. So. They can have around 13 per litter. And the cool 13? thing is. Yes. And they have a very, very short gestation, like one of the shortest um, mammals. Uh, sorry, <laughs> let me start over. They uh, have a very short pregnancy. So they'll only be pregnant for, um, I think it was something like a, a week. It was very shocking to me. Oh my goodness. And they goodness. come out super, super tiny. And that's the necessity of the pouch. That's where that comes in. That's why animals like kangaroos and koalas, that's why they have a pouch, because they have such tiny young that they need someplace else where they can grow up, uh, get this fur, this protection. Can 13 babies fit in their pouch? Absolutely. When they're that tiny, oh they absolutely goodness. can. And when they get too big for that, the pouch can expand a little bit, but they'll eventually crawl on her back and they'll all hang on. I don't know if you can see her hands, but she's got almost human-like hands. They're great for grabbing onto things and they'll grab onto their mom's fur and she'll just give them a big old piggyback ride. And while she's got babies on the back, she can have more babies in the pouch and in her oh belly. Oh my. <laughs> So, and they have 13 teats. 13 teats on a mama opossum. There's your number. fact of the day, people. That is unusual, 13. So in case you couldn't hear Mel, their gestation is super quick. It's like a less than a month from, you know, being pregnant to having 13 kids. So I need all the moms trying to homeschool right now to imagine a week right. from now, a month from now, suddenly having 13 extra extra babies around the good news is is they also uh hop off pretty quickly um they'll they'll start leaving them alone once they're weaned in fact as soon as they're out of the pouch they're pretty much weaned and they'll start eating whatever uh mom is eating um so she goes through them pretty quick and it's just a different um kind of uh method of getting babies out there in the world us humans and some other types of mammals live a really long time but we have babies only every couple of years. Yeah. These guys, since they live so short lives, they got to <laughs> pump out those kids. That is so crazy. <laughs> so um, more great questions about, uh, people are wondering how the babies get in the pouch. Does mom have to help mm -hmm. them? Or they how crawl does that work? on their own. Um, so they go from where they're born, and they crawl all the way up into the pouch, and they latch onto one of those 13 teats. That is amazing. What, uh, what are their babies called? Good question. Someone wondered if they were called Joey's, like. Uh, uh, you know what? They are called Joey's because they're they're marsupials. That's right. Okay. And then you know, one of our favorite questions that we like to ask here on Facebook Live is, what sound does an opossum make, Ooh. Megan? They usually make like a hissing sound, so like a. <laughs> I can't even make it. <laughs> Yay! Thumbs up! Thumbs up oh, for Megan. Oh gosh. And Mel, do you want to give a? Do you want to give Pablo? What sound oh, does he yeah. make? one time um, and it was when he was in the car with me we were actually coming back from the news studio okay. um, and I think the car ride he got a little car sick and they literally sound like a squealing pig um, so it was very quiet in my car you know when we're driving with the animals I always have my radio down and make sure that I'm fully attentive to them um, and we stopped at a light and all of a sudden I just heard a little wait <laughs> And that was, that was it, huh? Yep, that's it. They that don't really the make much else noise. And same with the ten Rex. They don't make any noise either. That was pretty good, you guys. Thumbs up for Mel and Megan on their animal noises. It's become everybody's favorite, uh, favorite Facebook field trip question. Pablo does look like he's in a video game. That's actually <laughs> true. People are just... Pablo has always been a favorite, but we're kind of introducing Ophelia for the first time. This is her first uh, 
her big Facebook debut. Yep, they're very new to the zoo and they've quickly become one of my favorites. So my plan is to make them everybody else's favorite <laughs> as well. All right, you heard her devious plot. <laughs> Pablo, we had Ophelia. Now, Ophelia has a, an opossum friend, yep. Olive. Olive's here as well. The difference um, is on their little ears. So Ophelia's yeah. got little white spots on her ears, but Olive's, are, her little ears are black and they live in small animal building. And yes, see, Ophelia is beautiful. So we've been comparing and contrasting all the kinds of mammals from the little Tenrec over here. We'll just give you another little Another little peek at that cutie. Who names the babies? It depends. Um, sometimes the keepers get to, sometimes we have generous donors who are given the opportunity. Sometimes uh, we do naming contests. And then sometimes they come from the zoo they come from has already named them. So opossums are just winning the day. They say, let them rule the world. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know. They, you know, they'll outnumber us here real quick if we do that. It's everybody's new favorite animal. So Megan, you might have won. But Pablo, Pablo is always the king. And then of course, we've been talking mammals and we can't forget these gorgeous marine mammals swimming behind us because I think we often forget that they're hairy too because in the water they look so yeah. slick. Thank you, Mindy, for donating. You guys, thank you so much for supporting your zoo. Do remember that we are, we are closed right now. Our summer, this is an opossum. We have Pablo, the armadillo. We have a Tenrec and marine mammals. So it's all about mammals today. And Ophelia seems to be winning the prize. She's getting lots of hearts. Good job on your Facebook debut. Thank you for being patient with us while we practice our distancing and wearing our mask. Thank you for the, you know, the sound issues and letting us know what you can hear and can't hear. All of our Facebook field trips live on the Facebook page. You can scroll back and watch those. They live there forever. You can also go to our YouTube page. We have a channel there, Utah's Hogle Zoo. All of the Facebook field trips are there. So if you have a student or someone who you think would love this, please feel free to share it. Don't forget to support your zoo right now while we're closed. Um, you can do that in other ways too. You can click this donate button or go to our website, hogelzoo.org, and buy animal care. You can do lots of different things. So thank you so much for being here. We'll be back with another.